The biggest mistake people still make when trying to learn DevOps is thinking it's a checklist of tools instead of a way of thinking about how software actually lives in the real world. DevOps is not Docker plus Kubernetes plus some cloud provider logos on your resume. DevOps is the ability to take a change, any change, and reliably move it from a developer's laptop into production while understanding what can break, how you'll notice it, and how you'll recover when it does. Once you internalize that, everything else starts to make sense because DevOps stops being abstract and starts being very practical. That's why the smartest place to start isn't with flashy tools, but with systems, real systems. Linux processes, memory, networking, files, ports, DNS, and what actually happens when something crashes. You should be comfortable with commands like PS, top, netstat, lsoff, and journal CTL, and understand why a service can't bind to port 80 or why a process gets killed by the OOM killer. If you skip this, Kubernetes feels like black magic instead of what it really is, a very opinionated process manager built on top of Linux primitives. When you understand the operating system, tools like Docker, Systemd, and Kubernetes stop being scary and start feeling like shortcuts you actually earned. After that, the best next step is to follow the life of one single, boring application all the way through. Write a tiny app, put it in GitHub or GitLab, containerize it with Docker, and run it locally. Then deploy it somewhere simple, like a single VM or a small Kubernetes cluster using something like K3S. Break it on purpose. Kill the container, misconfigure the database connection, limit memory until it crashes. Watch the logs with Docker logs or kubectl logs. DevOps lives in that loop. Tools like Docker Compose, SQLite, or Postgres, and even a basic reverse proxy like Nginx teach you more in this phase than any polished demo ever could. Once you're doing that, CI and CD stop being buzzwords and become necessities. If deployments depend on someone remembering steps, you don't have reliability, you have hope. This is where tools like GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, or Jenkins come in. Tests run automatically. Docker images are built the same way every time. Deployments are triggered by commits instead of humans. Whether you're pushing to a VM with SSH or to Kubernetes with Helm or Argo CD, the point is the same. Consistency under pressure. When production is on fire, you want boring, predictable pipelines, not heroics. Cloud infrastructure fits naturally after that. AWS, GCP, and yes, even Azure are just rented computers with APIs. EC2, Compute Engine, and Virtual Machines are still servers. S3, GCS, and Blob Storage are still object stores. Infrastructure as code with tools like Terraform or CloudFormation matters because it lets you define reality in code. When something breaks, you can inspect your Terraform state instead of asking around in Slack. Small setups using a load balancer, a couple of instances, and managed databases like RDS or Cloud SQL will teach you far more than over-engineered microservice diagrams. But at some point, you realize deploying software isn't even the hard part. Knowing what's happening after it's deployed is. That's where observability comes in. Logs, metrics, and traces are how you understand reality. Tools like Prometheus for metrics, Grafana for dashboards, Loki or Elasticsearch for logs, and Open Telemetry for tracing turn vague feelings into concrete signals. When latency spikes, you should know where to look first. When error rates climb, you should know whether it's the app, the database, or the network. Modern DevOps assumes failure will happen and optimizes for fast detection and recovery, not perfection. Another underrated DevOps skill is learning how to say no. Not every app needs Kubernetes, not every system needs Kafka, service meshes, or 10 microservices. Sometimes a single container on a VM behind Nginx is the correct solution. Over-engineering is often a sign of insecurity, not maturity. Good DevOps is about choosing the simplest architecture that can survive real usage and only adding tools like Kubernetes or Redis when they solve an actual problem. This mindset reduces outages and makes systems easier to reason about. The real learning acceleration happens when you stop chasing new tools and start repeating the same workflows under slightly different conditions. And if you are looking for a great place to level up your DevOps or backend skills in general, then you need to check out today's sponsor, Boot.dev. Boot.dev teaches DevOps and backend from the ground up in Python, SQL, Go, and TypeScript. But the key difference is that you're actually doing the work, not just watching someone else do it. You're building real projects, writing real code, and solving the same kinds of problems you'd face on the job. I've been using boot.dev myself, and what keeps me coming back is that it stays fun without becoming shallow. You earn XP, level up, complete quests, and yes, occasionally fight bosses, but it's all built around genuinely solid fundamentals. And whenever you get stuck, Boots, their bear wizard AI tutor, jumps in with context-aware hints and follow-up questions instead of just dumping the answer and moving on. They also recently launched Training Grounds, which lets you grind infinite custom challenges so you can really lock concepts in before moving forward. All the content is free to read and watch, and a membership unlocks the interactive coding, AI help, and progress tracking. If you want to check it out, use my link in the description and code CODEHEAD for 25% off your first year. This was CODEHEAD with yet another tech rant. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. Lights out.